Have you ever wondered what is the magic pattern formula to do this, to do this overlap, split, vent situation? They're very fancy and fashionable, and they're actually not that hard to do. So for Tricky Thursday, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha, your pattern nerd friend. I'm the owner of Creative Costume Academy and I have declared it my mission to help every stitcher or sewist who wants to learn pattern making learn that there are other ways to learn it and you can have fun in the process. So that's kind of what we share here on my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this, these splits or these vents and how do we do this? It's so nice when we're making our own patterns that we can choose the details that we wanna add into our designs. But some of them, how do you do them? How do you know what to do? If you haven't heard me say this, it is one of my favorite sayings, but the awesome thing about having the superpower of being able to make your own patterns is you're the boss. You are the boss. You get to choose exactly how this garment is going to be made, how it's going to be fit, the design elements that you want to add. So when talking about splits and vents like this, there are a couple of options. And so I wanna share those with you, what those different options are and how to make the pattern for them. Because I know most of us around here are visual learners, I don't need to tell you about vents and splits anymore. We're gonna go over, I'm gonna share with you some garments that I pulled out of my own closet to kind of give some ideas of different ways of doing this. And then we'll go to the table and learn how to make the pattern. Sound good? All right, I'll see you there. Since there are a lot of different ways that we can do slits, I went into my wardrobe and picked out some examples. This is a top I made recently, and I did have a little opening at the sides. And this is probably the, the most simple slit that you're going to see. And I want you to think about when you're wanting to make these vents or these splits on your patterns, it's really a continuation of a seam. And in this case, it's a continuation of my side seam. And really, I didn't do anything extra on the pattern to make this be available for a split. So you can see my seam allowance stayed the same. And the only thing I did was I stopped sewing where I wanted the slit opening to be. And then after that, I pressed my seams open and then I top stitched the opening so that it looked nice and neat from the outside. And pattern wise, it wasn't anything different that I did to the pattern other than giving myself that notch so that on both sides of the top, that the slits would be the same. This other top is a ready to wear. Somebody gave this to me actually, and it's a dress, it's a longer dress. And they have a similar slit at the side, as you can see here. There is one little difference though, that they did do some different things pattern-wise. So if we look at the inside here, Again, we're doing a continuation of that side seam and then it opens up here. In this case, because this is a finished edge, meaning this fabric is folded inside, we have the roll hem on the hem. So this pattern is a little bit different and they did have to think about this while they were in the patterning stage. So here is a pattern version of what this looks like. And I wanna let you know, going into your closet, and looking at clothes that you already have and seeing how they're constructed is the best way to learn. I still do this to this day, so don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. As you can see, here's my side seam just as it is here. And I do this a lot when I'm trying to figure out patterns, kind of work backwards. So here's my seam allowance. And in this case, they did an overlock or a serge seam with a lot smaller seam allowance. So it made it a little tricky and you had to clip the curves here to give it big enough so that you can fold it in and have a clean finish there. I would probably press my seams open. If you wanted them to be together, then you would just have to clip on one side so that you could open it up for the split. So wherever you want the split to start, however long you want the split to be, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of extra seam allowance 
above that split that's going to work for your split so that you have something to sew to. Um, it gives it a little bit more structure. So in my case, I would put a punch hole or some kind of indication to tell me where to stop sewing so that it's below where my extension is. And then if I was stitching this, I would stitch this, you know, stitch this up and around and then go and do my hem all the way around there. But we need to make sure that we have enough seam allowance that we can fold that in and get that clean finish along that slit. So everything starts at the seam line. So, and you'll see, I marked that for you on your patterns. And in this case, we do have a front and a back that we're looking at, but as far as what the seam allowance and extra allowance that you're needing to complete this slit, it's the same on both the front and the back. And then we have our hem allowance. So if you wanted a particular width of your hem, then you can see that this is folded in. It's not just surged and top stitched. So you wanna make sure that you have enough hem allowance and now this is going to be my finish line and then I added this so it would give me enough room to fold this over and over again. It's the same thing for the split. So I'm gonna continue my seam line as if it was gonna be sewn all the way down and then I give myself enough seam allowance so that I can fold this in and fold this in on both sides. And in this case, you know, it would just be the same seam allowance. You would stop sewing at the notch and then we have our split just like we have here. This is the jacket that I was showing you in our intro. You can see again, this is a continuation of that center back seam all the way down, even though we have an underlap. So that's how you wanna think about the pattern when you're making that pattern. You would make the base, the core of the pattern. So this would be your center back seam. You have your side back seams and, and so on. Then after that, you want to look at, okay, then we have a fold back for the underlap and we have to have some seam allowance to sew it to the lining. And then we also have a hem. So all of this is extra in addition to what the base pattern is. On this side, we have an extension, but it doesn't fold back again on itself. So it's an extension, but we still have seam allowance here to again, sew to the lining and have enough to turn up for our hem. So here's what an example of this pattern would look like. So here's essentially what the pattern would look like for this style of split or vent. So you would have your center back seam, and of course this would be full pattern pieces. I just wanted to show you and focus on this vent. And again, I would have my stop sewing point because you want to have your stop sewing point going past where you have that extra seam allowance to sew to. In this case, on some splits like this, you will see a top stitch to hold that vent down, but on some nicer jackets, you're not gonna see that stitching, but what happens is it's either caught on the inside, or in this case, it's sewn, the two vents are sewn to themselves inside the lining. So you can really learn a lot from looking at your clothes. So again, working backwards, in this particular case, we again have the same center back pattern. We don't have to make a left and a right in this case, because if you look, there is my underlap. And on a lot of jackets, you're gonna see this. This one, and I measured, I went and took my measuring tape and I measured how wide it is here from that center back, you know, invisible center back line or seam line and it was two inches up here and two and a half inches down here. And you'll see that a lot because we need more space in the hip area, which is this bottom hem area of the jacket. So you don't have to have it the same amount all the way. And in this case, and on a lot of jackets, you're gonna see that. So we have the extension past the seam line here, and then we still need that seam allowance to sew to the lining here. And we also need our hem allowance. And in this case, I didn't do quite as much hem allowance as they have here, but you could add more hem allowance. And in this case, I don't need to fold it again because I'm going to have a lining piece that this is sewn to, so I'm not rolling it twice. So you really wanna think about when you're making your patterns, how am I going to construct this? What other pieces are going to come into play with this? And then on the other side, 
you can see looking at the overlap we have the same thing our center back seam in this case we're folding that extra allowance back so we're folding it back on itself and then it is going to need some seam allowance to sew to the lining so i do still have that have that extra seam allowance and then we have our hem allowance again and we have the lining at the same thing so you are going to want to fold that back and then in this case you can see here i can see right in this jacket that that seam allowance is going here but down here at the bottom you probably can't see it because it's a nice print and everything on the camera but it is actually hand stitched right here to finish that off and give that a nice clean edge so they tried to do as much as they could with machine and then they went in and finished and had more control with the hand stitching so that goes into more of the building as far as the pattern goes it's actually the same center back piece where do we go yeah i have that hem folded out but you can see this is the exact same piece so this is your center back you would stitch down to your punch hole or your notch whatever indication would tell you where to stop sewing then you could even in this case maybe stitch across the top it would depend how you choose to construct it and then you would open it up and the overlap side would be folded back and the underlap side would stay folded out. And then you have that extra seam allowance to sew it to the lining in both cases. And because you have a bit of an angle here, you might wanna do some clipping or some cutting away of some of this extra seam allowance inside here, but that again goes into the sewing and the building. But in this case, this is the pattern for this style of vent. So you're always looking at where's my seam line that I'm continuing? How much extra do I need to add for the underlap overlap situation? What kind of seam allowance and hem allowance do I need to complete the design that I'm looking for? Then you have this kind of trendy jacket that I've had for a while. I love this jacket. And it also had some back vents. This is very similar to the jacket that we were just looking at. You have one side that's folded back, the other side that extends, that extends as the underlap. So this pattern would look something like this. In this case, we have vents on both sides. And this is where, you know, I'm showing you all these different examples because you really have to choose the one that's gonna work the best for you and whatever look you're trying to achieve. So in this case, there's no right way is what I'm trying to say. So it just makes a difference on what do you want the end product to look like? How do you want your top stitching to be? You know, is it going to add to the design? Is it gonna take away and all of that? So you're the boss in pattern making. You get to make the choice of what these details look like. I'm just showing you all the options so that you can pick the one that works for you. So you can see in this case, we have that. There's a lot of cool seams that add to the silhouette and to create these vents, they continued again this seam, this kind of side back seam, and that's the same thing. We're continuing this seam. So you're always looking for what is the seam that I'm continuing and start there. That's where you wanna start. In this case, I showed the example of something like this over here. So this is the seam that we're continuing. So you start with that, and then you wanna look at, you know, how, big of an underlap do I want to give? I actually measured this, so this is about an inch and a quarter. And then in this case, because if you notice, they actually rolled and finished off all of the edges. There's no exposed edges because this isn't lined and you would want it to be finished so that it would last a long time. So you need to make sure that you have enough seam allowance to fold it back so in this case i added a half inch so i could do a quarter and a quarter or a little bit less and maybe three eighths and then at the bottom same thing i added an extra inch so that i could fold and fold to create that hem and get that finished hem so that's the questions that you want to be asking yourself how am i going to finish this off how much seam allowance do i need to add and in this case for the overlap it's the same thing. So you're gonna sew down. I didn't give myself a stop sewing point for this one, but you would stop sewing wherever you choose the length of your vent. 
Then I have the extension, which is actually gonna be folded under to create a nice crisp vent for us. But on this one, we have it rolled and rolled. So I open up, that's the underlap. Then I have the seam allowance. You know, I added that extra half inch, so I had that seam allowance to fold and fold. And same thing down here at the bottom, I added an inch down there, so I would have it to fold and fold. And if you notice, this again, this would be two different pieces. This is gonna be this piece here, and this overlap bit is gonna be this piece here. But where the vent starts, it's actually the same extension. It's just in this case, we are leaving this side open so that it's the underlap. And then on this side, we are folding it back. So that it creates that overlap. And then in this case, you can see they've machine stitched that vent. So that's how they're holding that underlap in place and keeping everything nice and neat. And if you were doing this side, so if this was a, a cut on fold piece, this would be the exact same, just going the other way on the other side. Then the last example I wanted to share with you was this pencil skirt back vent because all the ones I've shown you up until now, the extension from the seam line, and in this case, we again are seeing the same thing. We have a center back seam and then it continues. That's where we wanna start. And then we add our extension for the underlap and the overlap fold back. So the one difference that I wanna point out is in this case, we do have that fold back and it's just a surge, so we don't need any extra. There is some interfacing in here, I can see. Now looking at it closely, but it's just a surge edging. There's no lining. There's no need for extra seam allowance on top of that to do a roll hem or anything like that. And we just have our hem here. But on this side, instead of having this just end here and have maybe just a roll hem or, or a turn back of the same, so it would be the same pattern, they have another fold back on this side. So this actually, the underlap side on this skirt has double the amount of an extension to create this look. So let's see what it looks like on paper. And by doing these little examples on paper, this is how I figure stuff out sometimes. So don't feel like you can't, you know, play around. I'd much rather waste some paper scraps trying to figure this out for what I want to achieve by folding it. Because if you can see it in paper, you can do it in fabric. But I would rather waste you know, or make mistakes or not get what I'm looking for on paper that I can easily throw away and not waste anything, not waste money or fabric that I'm holding on to than to, you know, sacrifice my fabric, not achieving the look that I'm trying to achieve. So in this case, always we're starting with the seam line. We have our center back seam and on the overlap side, we have just the turn back. This edge would be surged and you have your hem allowance. And like I said, you could, in the sewing, if you wanted to cut out some of this bulk in here, you could do that. Another thing I wanted to point out, where you're going to have your vent, you're gonna go from your regular seam allowance. So let's fold this open so we can see. Your regular seam allowance, in my case, I always like to use half inch, maybe yours is 5 eighths, whatever you like to use. You have your regular seam allowance, and then you determine the length of how long you want your split or your vent to be. Add a little bit more, half inch to an inch, more above that, and then that's where you start adding your extra. So there is a change in the seam allowance, rather, between where your vent or your split is and where your regular seam allowance is. You can have this be just an angled, I'm going out an inch and a half here, and then I'm going back down to half inch here and have it come in, or on some, and I think this skirt is an example, you'll see that instead of it being an angled thing, they kind of have rounded it. So again, you have some say, of course, in how this pattern looks in the inside. So that was the overlap side. We've got that figured out. Then our underlap side, we again, we're starting with our seam line. We want that same amount. I forget how much it is now, inch and a quarter it looks like. But in this case, that's where we are with this pattern, this side, that's where we are. 
But in this case, they also did a fold back of their underlap. So you need an additional, whatever the amount of your underlap was, you would add another of that same amount so that you would have that amount to fold back. And it gives it more structure. I bet there's interfacing in here and sure is. So it just helps it hold its shape a little bit more. But as you saw, I just showed you some examples where they didn't have that extra turn back. So in this case, you can see they are not the same pattern. You do have a left pattern and a right pattern, or rather left pattern and a right pattern. And, you know, what I would maybe do if you wanted to just cut you know, make it easy for cutting is you could cut two of these, you know, this would be your whole skirt, but you would cut two of these with this extension. And then when you get to working with your vent, you can just cut off this extra on the overlap side that you don't need. Cause you always would rather have extra and not need it and cut it away than to not have enough. So in this case, you have a little bit more on the underlap side. And then you can see again, they did do that top stitching like I just showed you on that trendy jacket. So you would have your, you would sew, stop at your punch hole where it told you do your pressing of your vent and open and all of that and maybe do your hem. And you would want to start this stitching for your vent to hold it down. And it's nice, you'll notice on the other jacket too, they did more of an angled top stitch. And that's most of the time, that's what you're gonna see instead of just a straight across. You can do straight across. I think it lays a little nicer when you do that angled, slightly angled top stitching. But that would hold that in place. And then you have this nice kick vent, which is a very nice detail. I hope you have enjoyed these couple of different options, whether it's a double vent in the back, a split at the side, or your traditional center back vent on your jacket. I hope you feel a little bit more confident about adding those details and designs to your patterns and how to do it right away. I would love it if you would like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss out on all the tips and tricks that we have to share here at Creative Costume Academy. And if you're ready for more, you wanna learn more about pattern making, I hope you'll join us over at Pattern Making Academy. You can learn more about it down here at learnpatternmaking.com. We can't wait to share all of our fun designs with you like this one. <laughs> if you're not sure you wanna try it out first, hey, why not? I've got a free pattern masterclass where you can learn more about my teaching style and how it's different and maybe even easier than you've seen before. You can check out my free pattern masterclass down below. Besides that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Thank you.